Well, thank you for your time today, Senator Kucher. Um, why don't we just start by you telling me a little bit about your background, um, your career, and what led you to the Senate of Canada? Well, I've been in the Senate since uh, 2018, end of 2018. And um, for that, I practiced psychiatry in Canada and worked in many other countries, uh, both as a director of a World Health Organization collaborating center, uh, as a consultant to many different governments, and in doing research on what can be done to improve mental health care, uh, quality of mental health care, access to mental health care, and equality before the law for people who have a mental disorder uh, compared to all other people. Okay, thanks for that. Um, we, we're we here today to talk about MAID and mental disorders, um, but I'm curious what other issues are important to you as, as a Senator? Oh, there are many issues that are important to me as a senator, and actually the issue around MAID and mental disorder only came about uh, because of Bill C-7. Uh, prior to that, I had little little interest in, in the issues around MAID. I was aware of them, but it wasn't uh, something that I was uh, focused on. But when I read the preamble to Bill C-7, and if I, my memory serves me correctly, it said something like, uh, for the purposes of this bill, a mental illness is not an illness, disorder, or disability, uh, it clearly signaled to me that the government of Canada was actually work, working in a discriminatory way against people who had a mental disorder. And that's why I got involved. So my involvement in this whole topic was to try to ensure that everyone in this country, even if they have a mental disorder, has equal access to all the health care that other people have access to. Mm -hmm. Okay, wonderful. That's a great segue into the next question, which is around irremediability, which is a concern for some people around mental disorders um, and the criteria for MAID. What, what's your comment on, on that concern? Well, irremediability uh, in medical terms uh, is best understood as the ability to make a prognosis for a particular patient on a particular outcome over a period of time. And uh, the reality is in none of medicine is there a 100% prognostic ability. Mm -hmm. It doesn't exist in any part of medicine. And yet advocates to deny people with a mental disorder access to MAID have been expecting that there's a 100% predictability for people with mental disorder, that's discrimination. The other thing on irremediability is that the courts have looked at this issue. The Truchon decision mm -hmm. uh, uh, clearly did not accept that argument. And the Alberta Court of Appeal, NEF, clearly, because they allowed a soul mental disorder, person with a soul mental disorder to go ahead with MAID, clearly uh, was able to differentiate irremediability. And at the top it all off, when you actually talk to psychiatrists who are expert in this area, most of them are consultation liaison psychiatrists. They do these kind of assessments all the time. Mm -hmm. um, and, and they are able to come to some consensus with each other about what irremediability for this particular patient means. And it's always a discussion between physicians and the patient about what irremediability means. It's not just a physician's prognostication. So it's part of what we consider to be patient-centered care. Mm -hmm. And with MAID Track 2, you need two independent clinicians in discussions with the patient coming to the same conclusion of irremediability or else the process doesn't go ahead. It's not simply as many anti-MAID activists have point, purported it to be some psychiatrist flies in, makes a quick determination, and off it goes. That's not how this works. So for all of those reasons and, and many more. For example, even there was a paper in the 2022 edition of the Canadian Journal of Psychiatry in which a group of, uh, of Benlux psychiatrists uh, did a Delphi procedure around the issue of irredeemability and clearly showed that psychiatrists could come to a consensus on which cases were likely to be irredeemable. So uh, I think that this is again, one of those red herrings the people who are against MAID in general or are really against MAID track two mm -hmm. are using to stigmatize and continue to stigmatize people who have a mental disorder. 
Yeah, thanks for that. Um, so you've just mentioned mental illness is often misunderstood and, and very much stigmatized. In your career as a psychiatrist, can you tell people about suffering from mental disorders and how these psychiatric conditions uh, can be assessed uh, similarly to physical conditions? Well, let me be clear that people who have a mental disorder suffer, can, not all, but can suffer horribly uh, from that disorder equal to, or maybe more than some people who suffer from a physical condition. Uh, also, some of that suffering is, is episodic during an episode, but it's not continuous. And here again, there has been deliberate obfuscation by anti-made activists to confuse episodic suffering with continuous and prolonged suffering. So when you actually talk to people who are at the point that they want to have access to apply for made consideration, not receive it, but just to apply, and you look at those histories, you find decades and decades of continuous irremediable suffering with all sorts of medications, electroconvulsive therapy, different kinds of ketamine infusion, different kinds of psychotherapies with no relief of their suffering. And yet some people deliberately obfuscate episodic short-term crisis with this prolonged decades and decades of suffering. So the issue here is people who have been suffering in Talbri for decades, and I gotta say, I've spoken with many of these people to try to come to understand what their life trajectory has been like, to try to understand the situation that they find themselves in. And I can honestly say, in over about 30 years of practicing as a psychiatrist, until I met this small number of people, I had actually never realized how long, how intolerable the suffering was, how many treatment failures that these people had actually had. So uh, I find it disingenuine for some activists to claim that this suffering isn't deserving of the same kind of end of life option as other kinds of suffering is. Yeah, absolutely. I think just the inclusion of being able to um, apply and request is uh, addresses some of the stigma for some of the people I've spoken to. Just being included is part of is part of uh, moving forward. Um, what? You kind of touched on this, but maybe there's a bit more. What do you wish every person across the country understood about mental disorders and the people who live with them? Well, I have found that there is a surprising lack of mental health literacy across this country of ours. We have had decades of increasing mental health awareness, but we still confuse mental health with mental disorder. We still confuse the syndrome of, say, clinical depression with feeling unhappy, demoralized, disgruntled, or despairing. People use the same word for everything. We still confuse a severe anxiety disorder where someone is housebound, cannot move because of this horrific anxiety from feeling worried, upset, or concerned. And, and many people have never actually met anybody who has a severe and intractable mental disorder. have never walked a centimeter, let alone a mile, in their shoes, and yet are very quick to judge, very quick to show a lack of compassion, and very quick to deny them the same options that everybody else is allowed to consider. Yeah, yeah, that's very true. Um, can you speak to the concern that we need to improve mental health services um, and supports before we include mental illness in our assisted dying legislation? I think that this is, again, one of the canards that has been put forward by the anti-made activist community. And it is a loud and noisy and vigorous community. Now, we certainly have to improve mental health care and access to mental health care. There's no question about that. But those 
are two different issues. Mm -hmm. Allowing people to apply for MAID on the basis of decades of failure of every single kind of mental health care. These are not people who are having trouble accessing care. These are, are people who have accessed the very best care available and are still not better after decades of trying. So again, I think this is again, deliberate confusion between an issue that we're all agreed upon, we need to improve access to mental health care yeah. to simply deny people who have already accessed every form of care. And it occurs to me that about 6 million Canadians as of our conversation right now, maybe more, don't have access to a family doctor. Mm -hmm. Our healthcare system is broken, and yet nobody is arguing that we shouldn't allow access to made for people who have as a physical healthcare problem, only for people who have a mental disorder. To me, this is a clear example of discrimination, using an argument to discriminate only against people who have a mental disorder. Yeah, that's an interesting way of looking at it because we all know that there's a lack of healthcare services for everybody, regardless of its mental disorders. So, um, is there anything else that you would add to the conversation? Um, maybe something that we've missed? Well, one of the things that uh, has occurred to me during this whole process uh, and discussions back and forth and in speaking with uh, many of the people who have are in a position where they've had intolerable suffering for a long, long period of time, have tried everything, and are, are just wanting to be able to apply for 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 the evaluation to to try to to see if they might qualify for MAID. And, and this is what they've told me. They said that nobody has listened to them. Mm. The anti-MAID activists, they're not listening to them. In fact the people have told me that the anti-made activists are using them to try to further an anti-made agenda particularly track two the joint committee that recently issued that problematic majority report they didn't listen to them the committee did not call them as, as witnesses and ignored the brief that they sent mm -hmm. the house never listened to them the ministers who brought forward this bill, the Minister of Health and Minister of Justice, they never listened to them. And the Senate actually defeated an amendment to the motion that's brought forward by Senator Moody that would have given the Senate an opportunity to hear from these people. They defeated that motion. So the Senate chose not to listen to them. Now, there is a mantra, mantra in Canada, nothing about us without us. And that seems to apply to everybody, except if you have a mental disorder. Right. So uh, I have never before seen any piece of legislation in this country come forward that has affected directly the health and well-being of a group of people without those people ever, ever having been heard. Yeah. The voices of these folks are, uh, they often don't want to come forward, but uh, they are, there are some who are willing to speak on behalf and and they're not being heard, are they? No, and in fact, uh, as I mentioned to you, none of the official channels which are supposed to ensure that those voices are heard actually have done their due diligence and have done what they're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. That's a shame. That's all the questions that I have for today. Um, so I, I really appreciate your time. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate all the work you're doing, how important yeah. that is. And um, well, I guess we'll learn a little bit more later this week where things land. Well, I'm not, I'm not uh, optimistic. Uh, I, I sadly think that we'll be looking at another Supreme Court challenge, but based on the, the shoulders and the pocketbooks of those who can least afford to make that challenge. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you for all that you do. We are so grateful for your voice uh, in the Senate. And um, and uh, I guess the work continues for all of us. Thank you so much. And you take good care of yourself and enjoy the rest of your day. Yes, you too. Thanks so much. Bye now. Bye.